back for segment four for Manuel Esperanza Baños. All right, there you go. Mr. Dancy, ¿por qué se considera un antropólogo cyborg? And that translates loosely, maybe, I don't know, into why do you consider yourself a mindful cyborg? Ooh. So I like the term mindful cyborg. I like it more than most connected man. Um, so I consider myself a mindful cyborg because when I see a piece of technology or I have an interaction with a piece of technology, I first consider, is it making me more aware of who I am and what my values are? If the answer is that is no, I try not to use those systems. So I'm not a big fan of Facebook because when I, find, when I use it, I find that I don't become introspective, I become extrospective. Um, so that's the first way I think I'm a mindful cyborg. Uh, the second way that I feel I'm a mindful cyborg is I believe that um, a lot of the technology that my friends and peers and family and the world starts to use is making them uh, maybe have a shorter uh, uh, set of emotions. So it's limiting them. So I try to use technology in a way that makes people feel delighted. So for example, um, my um, soon-to-be husband and I will take screen captures of each other's Snapchat just because it lets the other person know they screenshot it because that makes them feel special, like it's a digital kiss. Or we'll leave each other notes inside other applications uh, just to let each other know we're thinking about each other. So I think being a mindful cyborg, the second part is really using technology in service of and support for love. And that's something that we often don't talk about with technology. We don't talk about it being in support of love. And I think the last way that I am a mindful cyborg is I can completely unplug and just meditate without anything, uh, no technology, and be completely okay with that. So to kind of go back to your question earlier about getting anxious, I don't get anxious, I get annoyed. Uh, and uh, I, that's okay, because there's one thing in life you need to do, and that's get okay with not being okay. And some days you're good at that, and some days you're not so good. So we'll go on from there. ¿Se siente seguro a saber que un robo de alguno de tus aparatos puede crear El robo de toda su información personal. Uh, do you feel secure knowing that the theft of one of your gadgets carries or the theft of all your information? Um, I don't know if I feel insecure about it. Uh, I, I get asked a lot about data theft and privacy. I, I just always have a similar answer. I just don't believe in privacy. Uh, I think it's a it's a it's it's a social system for the middle class because if you're poor, you don't have privacy. And if you're rich, you don't care about it. Um, so, I mean, I wouldn't want my phone to be stolen uh, only because, like, it's a hassle. But, like, if my Fitbit or Apple Watch or any of my other wearables got stolen or a sensor at home with my dad, and I don't care. I mean, I don't think what I do is that interesting. So I think the obsession that some people have about their data being stolen is misplaced. Because when someone says, aren't you afraid that someone will steal all your data, what they're really saying, in my opinion, is I'm afraid what I do is so unique and so special that if someone were to find out that I would be judged. I don't have that problem. I don't care what you find out. If you find out that I'm a freak in bed, if you find out that I might spend too much money on shoes some days, that's okay. I do the same things everyone else does. That's why I'm post-privacy. I believe if we all were a little bit more honest about what we wanted, we wouldn't be so judgmental about ourselves. ¿Qué piensa la gente de su alrededor sobre tu estilo de vida? ¿Y cómo influyen estas personas en su vida personal? Uh, last question. So, what do people around you think about your lifestyle? Do they have opinions that influence uh, on your personal life? So, I don't often ask people what they think. Um, I've had problems with relationships in the past with people who uh, maybe weren't um, as compassionate as they could be about my use of technology. But then again, I might have done things that might have made them not happy. Um, uh, my, I asked my current partner, my current fiance, what he thought about it, and he had, you know, a roundabout answer. Do you remember your answer? Well, I would... You want to answer? I it says, what, what do people around you think about my lifestyle? Do you want to you answer? Sure. Do you want to be on camera? Sure. <laughs> he won't do it without a hat. See, I don't care. You can see, see again, I'm post-privacy. You can even see my messy hair. Hold on. Here's Fernando. Sí. 
Pues antes de que conocí a Chris, yo también estaba en un poco, estaba conectado, uh, estaba escribiendo mis, uh, mi, como sueño, qué tiempo duermo, los pasos que, que llevo en, en la día. Creo que yo estaba como Chris uh, usando mi, de, mi información para ayudarme en el futuro. Y no era algo grande porque yo estaba haciendo el, lo mismo. Um, <laughs> so that's it. I hope those answered your questions. And I'll probably put this on YouTube because I never put anything on my channel because usually I let news people deal with this. But this was fun. We're in Chicago. We just got back from two months in Europe. We're going to be back in the United States for a week and then we're headed back to Europe. So thank you so much and good luck on your project, Manuel. And thank you for reaching out and being patient with my schedule. Be good and stay connected.